Hi everyone, I'm Dina and you're watching The Particle TV. Hi Andrea, for starters, thank you for being part of this interview for our new section, The Particle TV. Uh, two and a half months ago, we had an interview in Britain, but we decided to do a follow-up video interview with you. And we are very pleased that you're here with us. So uh, to begin with, uh, you can tell something about yourself, about the band in short, and that's it. Then we will continue with other questions. Uh, so Lunar C was born, I think, almost 20 years ago. So it's a, uh, it has a long story. So the band, uh, I mean, it's something like um, melodic death metal, as you can hear. And uh, we try to, to do something very, musically speaking, personal. So mixing various kind of music. There is some power, there is some prog. Obviously, that metal uh, without some lots of melodic stuff. Uh, we we did our last album in the worst uh, period we can we can do because uh, we, we had the release party like two days before the lockdown here in Italy. So we did like two or three years of hard working doing the, this last album. Yeah. We planned festival tours of the promotion, then we, we did the release party and then nothing. <laughs> we are basically, uh, uh, we, we, we did this uh, uh, stop and yeah. uh, we cannot do any promotion or or concert or gigs, so I bet that, that was very difficult for you in that moment. It was it was awful. I can only imagine. Um, regarding your tour, uh, 2022, can you tell us more about that? Your plans, tour, touring with the band. But uh, there will, I mean, the situation gotten worse with COVID. So I don't know now if you have any more news you can tell us since our last interview. Yeah, by now it's very difficult to to plan something, you know, because uh, I, I see that also bigger band than us are planning and then uh, uh, canceling, planning, canceling. So uh, we try sometimes to plan something. Mm, we, but I think really uh, it, it seems very impossible to do something uh, real. We. What we want to do is to um, promote this album, going uh, on tour, playing festival, uh, headline show, supporting show, but it's really hard to plan. Hopefully we, we can do it in 2022, but I don't know. These are, this is what we want to do, but uh, I honestly speaking, I don't know if we, we will able to do this. <laughs> What are you doing at the moment? Uh, you are working on a new material for your upcoming seventh album, uh, but you told me that the album will be out in 2023. So can yeah. you tell us why exactly 2023? Because uh, it's the 20 years of activity of the band. So it's uh, something to, um, I mean, to celebrate the, the 20 years, but, uh, by now, there's no uh, like songs or something really uh, ready. But we 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 meet in the studio, we play, and uh, so some materials is becoming too bold. And uh, we plan to uh, to do this in 2023. But also in this case, it will be possible. <laughs> we don't actually know. Yes, I understand. Uh, I must say your last album, Earthling Terrestre, was like amazing. And you Thank got you. a huge feedback from the yeah. fans, from the public in general, and from the press. So yeah, I listened to it several times and I find it really great. So I would recommend to everyone who's watching us now to listen to it if you haven't uh, done it already. Yeah. Can you tell us more about the process on working out on that album? Some stories if you have maybe, yeah. I think we started working on an album in 2008 or something. 
uh, just after the last tour we did with a supporting Orphan Land, we did a long European tour with them, and then we we stopped for two, from touring and start to composing and uh, for for everything. I think yeah, the, the pre 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 production was like one uh, years and a half long. And then we we get in the studio at the Outer Sound Studios of, from Giuseppe Orlando from November. Uh, so it's a very important studio. We we work with him with all, uh, with other with our other album. And uh, also the the production was pretty long be, because we stay in the studio like almost the whole summer of 2019. And uh, yes, the, the album was out on I think, December. And uh, yes, the, the feedback was very, very, very positive. Also, not only the feedback from the press, but also in selling terms. So it was a, uh, our plan of promoting was something very um, logical. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we, as I told you, we did the, um, the release in February and then uh, everything was impossible. But uh, we are very proud of uh, Earthling Terrestre because maybe what I can tell you is like the, is like if we definitely find a road. So with the previous album, uh, all the previous album was, um, like maybe if we was touching different paths. Maybe the first was like uh, more close to power. The second one, Rus Code Selector, was more progressive. Hundred Light Years was like a punch in the face, never going under 200 BPMs. And then uh, I think Hurting Terrestri was like the, the the circle of everything. So we are very proud of it and. We are said not only to not going live, but uh, not going live to play the songs because we are really bounded to the songs. Great. So we can expect something similar to that for the next album? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. You shared the stage with the big names. Yeah. Really? If you need to pick one memorable moment, what would it be? If that's even possible. No, but I think, uh, personally speaking, I was in the band from five or six years. So uh, I, I can tell you about myself. I think the tour with our fine land was very important for us, not only for the fact that we shared the stage with them, that however is a band that we really uh, enjoy and uh, musically and personally. But maybe that was the first uh, uh, professional tour we did. So with the tour bus, with a big production. So it really helped us to understand how um, the, the music business work in a higher level. Of course. And uh, that was fantastic. And also was uh, uh, what I really enjoy, it was that one night you play in front of uh, 2,000 people, and maybe the night after you play in front of 30 people. Of but that's how it works and uh, what really what to do, because I think every show gives something to us in any different situation. Of so course. that's what uh, my, probably my best memories of my Lunar Sea uh, journey. There was also uh, the opening for Dark Tranquility and Insomnium in 2010, but you yeah. weren't part, part of the band then, right? So you really like oh, yeah, I mean, that is the highlight of, of the band's career, career surely. Sure. How can you picture the future for the band? We, we just want to, I mean, go in work, work, and... Mm -hmm. Step by step, I mean, it's obviously, we are really, um, it's not just um, a band, we play song, we play show, it yeah. Lunar gives uh, something to, to, to us. So we want to 
um, going step by step always higher. And uh, but uh, because this is what we really like to do. And we, one thing we know, uh, also in this period that we have to be stopped, we never think of, okay, maybe it's time to get up and leave everything. But uh, we really, we, we just want, want to do what we like. So playing, uh, get in the studio, rehearsal room, enjoy the time with us. And uh, if there will be something bigger or something that we should uh, do it. But this is what we like to do. Of course. Yeah. Uh, do you have some idols and big influences when it comes to music? Because you're like, you're having different elements in your music. So if you need to pick some idols, who would they be, if I may uh, ask? Lunar C work, at least for us. Yeah. Because a different mixture of influences. And I think that by now, with this lineup, we, we find the, the right balance of everything. I um, I prefer I mean all the melodic stuff, but maybe uh, Alex the singer, even if he uh, growls and screams, he has a um, hard rock background. Uh, piano is really uh, a progressive guitar player, so. Um, this is obviously uh, we are really influenced by the God of Book scene, so the Tranquility, Flames, Insomnium, and all that stuff. But uh, we like to find our way with this mixture. Also, maybe because during these almost twenty years we had uh, different lineups, so every every members uh, maybe gave some influence and mm, to, to the band. Of course. Um, for the end, the last question, uh, having in mind the pandemic and that you can't simply, you can't plan anything, like you said before, uh, do you maybe have in, in plan the idea of maybe doing something uh, online, maybe some online show or something, or there's not something you're interested in? A lot of bands are doing this for the last year and a half because of the situation. So, I mean, it can be a good alternative, but it's... Yeah, the but point. <laughs> we thought about it, but it's not what we we really like or interesting to do. Um, I don't know. All, uh, as you can see, we we're not also a social band uh, that we are on Facebook, Instagram. We, yeah, we're not really interested in, in that. So I don't think we'll do it. Or if um, I don't know, some uh, I saw some festival are doing something online. So maybe something like that it could be possible. But I don't think doing something by ourselves, like just getting the studio, playing in front of camera, streaming, it's it's not our interest. Of we also have like a, our studio, so we we can do it, but. We're not really interested in doing this because I think that music is uh, playing in a stage in front of uh, one, two people or uh, 10,000 people, but uh, it's something real. Okay. So we don't really like to do this. But of course. Maybe, uh, hope, hoping that this won't be the only solution for the next year. I know. Because I know. Well, we will be optimistic. So, can you tell us this? If the tour happens, if the pandemic like goes away, mysteriously, what can we expect? Which countries? Can you tell us that? Uh, for touring, you mean? Yeah. Mm, we we move, especially in Europe, Eastern Europe. We we have a big uh, response. Germany, of course. Maybe we like to do something like in the North Europe because it's uh, there is a lot of interest in, in that area. Maybe in the future it would be interesting also. I mean, going outside the European border, so doing something. Right. Yes, but uh, 
this is uh, just fantasies by now. <laughs> Dreams. Well, one should never stop dreaming, like they say. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. We are very thank happy to, to tell your story. And we'll be hearing from you soon, I hope, regarding tours and albums and everything with what comes with it. Uh, it was nice meeting you. Grazie tante. Bene. Saluta a tutti e tutto il band e ci sentiamo. Spero presto. Assolutamente. È stato un piacere. Grazie. Ciao, ciao.